Welcome back to the Ask Mr. Green Thumb and Real Estate Show. Got questions about perennial problems with flowers? What about issues with closing on your newest property? Call now, 813-289-1860. Toll free, 877-969-8600. And now, your hosts, Stan and James DeFritis. Well, yeah, sometimes it seems like a shell game to me, too. Because, you know, you, you can say we're making more money, which we all are. But if I go to Publix or I go to Home Depot or Lowe's and it cost me, you know, 30 bucks for a sheet of plywood. Um, what a deal. What buy a deal. it. Buy it. Buy it. it now. You know, get that two by four for only ten dollars. I'm going, you know, I can see where that is going to up the price of houses in the future. Big, big time. Big time. And that's and that's part of the problem. Hadn't it been said like 40 percent or something I've heard? Yeah. I mean, if the if, if the framing of the house is going to call is going to go. You know, let's say it costs you know twenty five thousand to frame a house, and now we're talking seventy five to a hundred thousand dollars to frame a house. That's a huge amount of increase, you know, in terms of of what is going to be passed on to the buyer, you know, and they're just going to pass it on. Now, the problem that might might happen is, is you let's say you build now, it's not going to happen right away, but it will happen eventually. We'll be in a situation where you know builders paid X amount for lumber, and then the market changed. And they're not going to see that paid because the, the house will sit on the market so long that it's either sell it or smell it like in the meat business. So that will happen eventually at some point. They'll build a bunch of houses. They'll have paid this amount for the house to be built. And then they won't get their value back out of it. You'll because, find cleared lots and yeah, or I mean, partly framed homes that haven't been finished. Right. And you'll just see, you know, a shell of a house waiting. Now, for, I remember that in the old days. Sure. And that and, still and, happens. And that happens from time to time where you'd see concrete like walkways. In a neighborhood that you see the neighborhood was going to be developed. That go nowhere. That go nowhere. And I mean, in four years, sure, it could sit there. I mean, I remember, I'm I'm even talking to our buddy Bill who moved to California. Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, he remembered, you know, back in the 70s where there was a dip in the price of real estate. And so he's been waiting now for five years. He hasn't jumped in. He wants to buy a house in California. Sure. And I said, you know, you're doing it wrong, Bill. You, You make your money. Yeah, there and then you retire here right you don't go to a more expensive market to retire that makes no sense well you know and i'll tell you something else that i think is interesting too and and again for those people who have never lived where you know if you've always lived in a home and let's say you've always lived in a home that was not an indeed restricted community uh, then the, some of about what i'm about to say will seem very foreign to you now, fortunately, most people, or unfortunately for some people, uh, if you've lived in a townhome community uh, where there's a homeowners association or in a condo where there's a condo association, you will have run into this idea that, uh, that there are rules. And w- one of the articles that I printed out that I thought was interesting that I'd bring in, that talk because, you know, this is a real estate related thought, is now it's a little more... Uh, you know, gray than, than, than black and white, but I'll, I'll paint the picture for you. The, this couple, they purchased a really nice town home. And when they purchased it, they purchased it from the builder, the, the manufacturer, and it had a certain, and you know, and they got to pick as you typically do when it's brand new, you get to pick some of the, the individualized features. Now, typically most builders will create a cookie cutter appearance on the exterior. So everything's kind of the same. And they do that for uniformity. They do that to keep the community looking very similar throughout because that generally helps maintain value. Um, Internal features usually are the ones that are highly customizable because the interior, even in a condo, it's yours. You can do what you want with it. Now, on the exterior, a lot more rules. But in this particular case, they bought a, 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 a condo or a townhome, rather, and they got to choose the brick color and they got to choose the exterior color to match the brick color. And it was a color that obviously worked and went together. Then they get a letter in the mail years later. you know, And the problem is, is they just had their house repainted. You know, and so then they get a a notification from their homeowners association or condo uh, association saying, you will paint your house gray, this color gray. Mm. And they said, no, 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 that would look terrible. We have gray brick. You'd be asking us to put gray on gray. That would look terrible. We're not, we don't want to do that. And so they wrote in 
and they were asking this question, and they said, can my HOA force me to use their paint color? And the question is yes and no. The question becomes, so, and people love that when, you know, that's a very lawyerly answer, yes and no. Well, again, it depends. You need to look at your covenants, your Declaration of Covenants documents. That's what the lawyer who answers this says, and then that's why I'm repeating it. And uh, he basically says, look, if, if in, the, in the formative documents it gives you a list of approved colors, then the odds are you could probably still pick the color you want. But as far as, you know, maintaining this idea that they can demand that you change the color of the unit, well, again, it's what the specific language in the docs. If it gives you a choice of choosing, then they, are, then they cannot remove that choice unless they're changing the docs entirely. So, you know, you really, it's a case-by-case -case scenario, but I will say this, and I've experienced this myself, Many homeowners associations, condo association boards are made up of good, well-intending people. But, and they don't even know when they're exceeding their authority most of the time because, A, they're not lawyers. And Sounds most, like the government. Right. And, <laughs> and again, remember, these are just volunteers. Nobody in a homeowners association or a condo association can be compensated in the state of Florida. Not allowed. Okay, and, and very good reasons for that. So they're always a volunteer position. It doesn't cause the other people in the community to think, that, of course, they don't know that. They assume that these people are somehow getting some kind of stipend or getting paid. And sometimes there's some off the books crap that takes place <laughs> uh, that, you know, and then usually those people get caught. Um, sometimes, you know, or they give an account to somebody who's doing maintenance there. Right. Or, or there's, you know, pay for play kind of stuff going on. That happens a lot. Um, but in general, you're not supposed to be paid. Um, and, you know, and I would say this, it doesn't matter if you come in from another part of the country or a part of the, you know, a different part of the world and you're a transplant here. These are our rules and these are our rules on the books. You must follow them. So whatever you might have done in your old country that would have been fine, it's not fine here. Find out what the, the rule is here and follow it because you could be in a lot of trouble. So, but, it, it, you know, again, these people are very well-intended people. They mean the best, but they sometimes will exceed their authority given to them from the documents. And, uh, you know, so in this particular case, that person will have to read their covenants and determine whether or not they, the board has the authority to do that. Boards can increase their authority, but they have to do that by changing the documents that give them that authority. Well, I would think it's funny. I mean, I know we've been at some condos where, let's say, there's a board up where you could put your card, and they'll the, the president of the board will come by and go, I'm in charge of these 10 units. I'm taking down your card because only right. a card approved by me, not not by a board, but by her, right. is, is the ultimate test. And, of course, most of the time I don't really care because you're not going to get a lot of business off that card board right. thing it, anyway. It's the thought, though, that, the, that they – that it's such a competitive market that people are going to want to give themselves any edge that they can get. I mean, uh, again, in real estate, sign placement. Uh, this is probably the number one thing that causes grief for homeowners associations and realtors. They don't usually take the time to call. And, and I will say this, too. Um, the, uh, you know, the CAM, the, the property managers, are usually overworked. The, the latest thing in these property managers, is, if people don't know, they call them portfolio managers. Wow. Well, it's a really cute term, but what that really means is, is that uh, instead of looking after one or two properties, they're looking after a dozen. Sure. Okay. So now they're having to track down, and, and, and they have to prioritize it. You know, if they have a flooding problem in one property, that probably is going to take precedence over the dog who uh, the droppings aren't being picked up in the neighbors complaining about it. OK, that's not going to have the same weight. But, you know, but that's the person that you're going to want to start with who you hope has familiarized themselves with the declaration documents that explains where real estate signs can be placed. You know, sometimes you can put a regular sign out. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can put a, a sign in the window. Sometimes you can't. So there's all So even though it's your place and you would like a sign put up and you thought it was your place, 
they can have rules in their docks that say, no, you cannot have a sign in the window. Or down by the curb. Right, or by the curb. It may be, and maybe it's specified six feet away from the entrance of the home. I mean, as silly as this all sounds, the a lot of these, or it has to be an approved sign, a, an approved real estate sign that has been approved by the by this particular company to put this sign in for you. You know, and I mean, so that creates a lot of irritation for real estate agents. And I will say this, if you are serving on a board, whether it be condo or homeowners association, if you make it more difficult for real estate agents to sell real estate in your community, you have not increased the value in your community. So I'll, I'll, I'll uh, and, you know, and I'll, I'll say that to people that are on the boards, you know, uh, and yeah, I'm looking at you, Yachts of Pasadena. Uh, I'm telling <laughs> you right now, if you want to make it really hard for agents to show property in that in that community, you did not increase the value of your community. You actually made it harder to sell. Harder to sell means you get less for your home. And yeah, there are people that live in there that are also high up in the real estate business that don't seem to understand that concept that person will remain nameless. Yeah, I would too. But, and, and there again, in some cases in the last year, some things have gone up even no matter when it doesn't make sense. Um, and sometimes it's the luck of the draw of when your listing comes out and you get it. We can say that to agents in general. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there are, there are times that everything seems to hit well for that agent. And of course, won't those agents let you know, I've got so much money, I don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not one of them. But um, but there are agents out there who love to flaunt that. that oh, they, sure. And, and I will say in the real estate business, if you're not a puffer, uh, and what I mean by puffing, you always want to tell people you're doing 10 times better than you really are. And, uh, and that just seems to be what real estate agents do. Uh, but just, you know, if they told you that they closed 30 transactions, they probably closed 10. Um, just realize that's what they probably did because they all like to embellish a little bit to talk about how great they are in real estate. I see a lot of cases now, too, where people will go, you don't want to have to have a showing. You don't want to have to have anything like that. Let us buy your property at 30% less than what the market's paying. Sure. It's so, it's so much upside for you. And I'm oh, thinking, yeah, really upside. Well, I don't know about that. Um, you might want to think that one over a couple of times and maybe talk to a real estate professional. Exactly. And with that music, we'll be taking a break set here, but we'll be back. And we're talking about gardening and or real estate. So if you have any of those kinds of questions, you will be interested to keep tuning in to our show. Want to talk real estate auctions? Call James DeFritis at 727-254-7127 or go online at AFLRE.com. 